you look at verse 7, let's slip down to the next part of this passage in the Sermon on the Mount. The Lord says, and when you pray, don't use vain repetitions like the heathen do. For they think they will be heard for their many words. You know what I call this? This is the next prayer eliminator. This is heartlessly praying. It's a mechanical praying. When prayer is mechanical, there's no response from the Lord. As much as when prayer is hypocritical, there's no response from the Lord. When prayer is mechanical. Now, if you are praying, and praying is like talking to someone, how would you like it if every time you called someone on the phone, they said the same thing? Hello, how are you? I am fine. I hope you are fine. Thank you. It was good to talk to you. Goodbye. That's okay the first time. How about the next time? Hello, how are you? I am fine. How are you? I am fine. It's good to talk to you. Goodbye. Would you be communicating with them? Yet there are people that I have listened to for years that say the very same thing every time they pray. You ever thought about that? They just have their tape. I think when you ask them to pray, they play the tape. (laughs) It's the same thing every time. Now, we're not supposed to be uh, prayer. You know, we don't have a Geiger counter looking around for real prayers and not real prayers, you know, and, you know, <laughs> your, you know your, your aren't real. Oh, yours are okay. It should be a personal, a personal thought in our hearts. Am I really talking to someone that I love, that I know, that I have a relationship with, or am I just playing the tape? Again, mechanical praying. The Lord says, watch out. Now, the context, they used to have these prayer wheels, and the pagans had them, and it would spin around. In fact, they still, you can find these in in, uh, some eastern countries, and they just spin them. They go before their idol, and they spin the deal. saves a lot of time. And every time it spins around, there's like 25 times the prayer is written on a little slip of paper, and they just spin it. And that was 25 times, kind of like doing the, the rosary over and over and over again. They just spin and spin and spin and spin and spin. And that's what he's talking about, the vain repetition. He's not saying that we don't pray the same thing over and over again. Remember Jesus. He went and and knelt in the Garden of Gethsemane and said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. And then he went back and checked on the disciples. And then he went back and prayed the same thing for an hour. Paul, beseech the Lord three times. and, And there's nothing wrong with repetition in prayer. It's mechanical, mindless repetition. It's just play the tape again. Brother so-and-so, would you pray? Out comes the same thing. You've heard him pray for the last 25 years. And there's no freshness. There's no intimacy. There's, it's mechanical. Heartlessly praying. Those prayers aren't put through. Well, Mark 9.29, here's another one. Jesus gets to the heart of each one of us with each one of these warnings. Mark 9 and verse 29, it's what I call unfastingly praying. Those prayers are not put through. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, Mark 9, 29, he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. And he links together fasting with prayer. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to stop eating when you pray. But there is a spiritual principle here. Prayer is seeking God and fasting is denying self and the flesh. And there's something about one who is not denying their flesh cannot fully seek God. And one who is seeking God about something who does not deny their flesh, the Lord couples together and says in those instances when there is a a very great need. By the way, you say, is this only for demonized people or whatever? Well, in uh, Acts 13, 2 and 3, you don't have to turn there, but it says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, The Holy Spirit said, separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work. And having fasted and prayed, they sent them out. In the regular ministry of the church of the first century, when they conquered the whole world for Jesus Christ, fasting and prayer were hand in hand. You know, we live in a very consumptive society, and every, everybody is, is basically thinking about self-need and self-fulfillment, and, and it, we're very consumptive for ourselves. And the Lord says, you get tainted by that, and I can't hear you when you're all full of yourself. You must fast. You must deny self. And unfastingly praying, those prayers don't go through.